Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this week's episode, we're talking about backgrounds for photography, specifically backgrounds for product photography. I get an amazing amount of questions about what do I use for backgrounds for product shoots because they see all these different stylish advertising and product shoots with all these unusual or elaborate backgrounds or mini set builds. And people often don't understand where they come from, how they're made, or what they are. So I thought what I'd do today is run through uh, a bunch of my product images for clients and personal ones, etc. We'll look at the backgrounds that were used, and I'll show you some of the materials that we used to make them and some of the techniques and ideas uh, to implement those backgrounds, which obviously contribute a huge amount to the success of the final photograph. So let's take a look at some shots. So the first image we're going to look at is this highly stylized Apple Watch shot that I did. And you can see these really lovely, classy uh, matte black blocks and dark gray uh, set that we've got here. Now, what is that? Well, this is it. It is actually some acrylic blocks. And if I hold that up for you here, you can have a closer look at it there. And you can see that it's actually hollow on the inside. You can see some of the glue marks there. And it's actually just pieces of acrylic that have been um, glued together and then they've been vinyl wrapped. Um, so sign service companies uh, that deal with acrylic and th those sort of materials, they can also do the vinyl wrapping and that gave it a lovely clean line. I've got different ones at different sizes here that have been made. And those are the actual blocks that were used for that photograph. And those blocks have also been used for other pictures as well. So where do you get those things from? Well, you just get them made. And one of the most convenient places for materials, and we're also going to talk about some of the other materials that I get from the same supplier, is uh, companies that make signs. Now, this sounds very simple, but if you think about sign service companies, this is people that make signs for companies and business, uh, external property signs uh, for businesses and doors, etc. Most of the time, they're using metal and acrylic, plastics, that sort of stuff. Uh, in America, I think it's called plexiglass or macrolon. And because they use those materials, they've got them in stock. And they've got laser machines, they've got cutting machines, they've got the ability to cut different shapes, different sizes. So they're a really good resource for getting props made, uh, especially things like acrylic blocks and acrylic cutout angles. So I always go to my local sign service company for sheets of acrylic, for special uh, things to be made, and for, um, yeah, for custom um, creations to help my photograph. So if I think of an idea and I think, oh, we could use a block for that, as in this case, then I'll simply get it made. And the beauty of it, of course, is that you can reuse them for other products. So in this particular shot, as you can see here, you can see we've got lots and lots of different size blocks and they'll be suitable for other product shots from jewelry or various uh, small items in the future as well. Now, while we're on the subject of acrylic, let's take a look at another one. And this one on the Fahrenheit um, perfume, we used acrylic sheets again. So this is a fluorescent orange acrylic sheet, transparent, as you can see. And this is only a three millimeter thick one. And we simply had the sign service company cut them into triangles to various random sizes that we gave to them. And then you can see in the final image there how those were all just angled into position uh, and, and glued in position to build the set. And you can see obviously how that makes the photograph and how important it is to the final image. But it's actually just coming up with the idea of thinking, well, actually, some nice pieces of transparent acrylic would be good for this particular image. Let's take a look at another one. So another one that uses acrylic or plexiglass or macrolon sheeting uh, is this Elemis one here. So for this one, I decided to create loads of small floating layers, very easily done by just putting a little wooden block underneath each 
Elemis product and then another layer underneath and another layer underneath. And I just chose colors that I thought would work well together, these sort of pastel hues selected from a few sample chips which colors I wanted to order. And then I ordered the sheets of acrylic as so. And this is one of those sheets of acrylic here. You can see it's just a simple um, piece of pastel colored uh, pinkish acrylic. Now this one is actually a matte acrylic. Acrylic comes in gloss. I don't know if you can see that in the light or not. You can see a little bit of gloss on there. But this one is a matte one, as you can see here. Uh, this one's a three millimeter and this one is a five millimeter. And they, those are the two common sizes. And for this particular Elemis shot, three millimeter was fine. It's nice and rigid, so it can take the weight of a product. And I said, just put a little block underneath. Um, you can see it's maybe glossy on this side, but that's just because it's got a sheet of protective plastic. Now this one, interestingly, and this can save you some money on the shoots, this one is gloss on one side and matte on the other. So you've got the benefit. You can actually order acrylic, either matte both sides, gloss both sides, or one or the other, and then you've got the choice um, by just flicking it over. And that makes a really effective background. And I use acrylics um, all of the time on many different shots. Let's take a look at another one here. So this one here is also the matte acrylic. In fact, it's actually the same, exactly the same type of acrylic as this. It's just in bigger sheets. Three different color sheets there uh, formed together to make this uh, little box shape there to put the Keratas uh, uh, products in. And then I'm using a projection attachment light to create the shadow of a window for a sort of added sort of background effect in there. So acrylics from sign service companies are really, really useful source of materials. Let's take a look at a couple more. So we have two shots here um, on the Chanel uh, product. And you can see this one uses lots of little small uh, tiles. Um, that was basically using these, these tiny little gloss tiles that I, again, just sheets of five millimeter gloss acrylic cut to the size that I wanted. So I had a number of them cut and then we just bunched them all up together in a block pattern to make the pattern that you can see in that shot. And then we did an alternative version of the shot here where we just put water in amongst the blocks and we let that water rise up really, really slowly. So the viscosity of the water held and it formed this lovely pattern around those acrylic blocks. So that's essentially exactly the same shot as you just saw before, which is uh, the one here, but this one is without the water. So just another simple idea of adding water in onto that gave me a brand new uh, background to work with. We also did a version on white acrylic blocks. So the same thing here again, sheet of standard white gloss acrylic, five millimeter, had the blocks cut to size and then uh, laid them in that staggered block fashion that you can see in the photograph so that it can almost look like a marble tiled floor or something uh, like that. So acrylic surfaces, really, really good. Now, if you don't have the budget to buy sheets of acrylic, there's another material that I use regularly, which is a lot, lot less expensive, and that's just painted hardboard or MDF. So MDF or hardboard is just a type of wooden material available at all DIY stores. It's very flat and smooth on one surface. I think it's made by gluing leftover wood dust together, but it's used a lot in the building industry for, you know, making cupboards and various things. I think even some kitchens are, are made from it. It's called MDF. Uh, but there's also a thinner version in a three mil, which is slightly bendy, which is called hardboard. And it's gloss on one side, smooth on one side and textured on the back. And that one's often you see it at the back of wardrobes. It's that sort of flexible material at the back of wardrobes or the bottom of a drawer. It's the same sort of material as MDF, but it's not as rigid because it's much, much thinner. 
it doesn't matter which one you use because you're using the smooth surface side. It's just that the thinner one you can bend into a curve if you need a curve background. Now, what you can see in this particular um, candy um, and biscuit photograph is two sheets of the three millimeter hardboard, the gloss side, just painted with matte emulsion paint, just standard interior wall paint. Go and choose your colors and then paint it with a roller, two coats, and voila, that's what you end up with. Makes for some stunning backgrounds, very inexpensive, and of course, make sure you use matte paint so that you get that lovely matte finish surface. And we use painted backgrounds um, for a huge amount of um, product photography work. Let me give you another example. So the background in this whiskey shot is also a piece of hardboard. It's just a big sheet because the big sheets come in eight foot by four foot. As I said, they're smooth on one side. They're not too heavy, so you can clip them up on a couple of C-stands. And we just paint them before we put them up. And this one was just painted in a medium to dark brown paint. Now, interestingly, while we're looking at this particular photograph, you'll see that the surface that the whiskey is sat on, this big chunky wood, well, that's actually just our coffee table from our reception that we took the legs off the coffee table and we used it as a nice chunky sort of bar edge for this photograph. And then interestingly, you can see the bit below there, the, the vertical piece of wood that looks like the sort of underside edge of the bar coming down. Well, that's actually the same background that is used in one of our food shots. That's one of these ones here. And these are simply uh, homemade backgrounds of planks of wood, either floorboards or you know, just boards of wood that we buy from um, hardware stores, um, batten them all together on a uh, beam of wood, and then you end up with a one meter square or slightly larger, and then just give them a little bit of a stain to bring out the grain, so a bit of wood stain on there, and that creates these amazing backgrounds that we use for food photography. And I think we've got another example of that one here. So this is also that same background, just at a different angle. And it makes these, you know, these wonderful textured uh, rustic backgrounds. But again, because we keep the backgrounds and we use them for various projects, here you can see it being used, as I said, in this particular shot as well. It's just this little edge detail down the bottom here um, of the vertical face of that bar. So that's that essentially got three backgrounds, if you like, our coffee table from reception, um, an MDF or hardboard sheet in the background that's been painted with brown matte emulsion paint, and one of our food photography wooden backgrounds there at the bottom as well. And of course, if you keep these backgrounds and you've got a little space or storeroom or somewhere to put them aside, then you can just use them over and over again for a variety of projects. Continuing with the um, MDF or hardboard backgrounds, here's another example. So this product shot of the um, Modalu, um, I can't, can't pronounce their name, of the Modalu um, handbag, this one is sitting on uh, probably on a curved piece of hardboard. So as I said, the MDF itself is thicker, rigid. It's about like one or two centimeters thick, but the hardboard's only three mil, so it bends. And again, here, we just painted it in the appropriate color with a roller with matte emulsion interior paint, and that can create a lovely seamless backdrop for certain product images as well. Let's move on to another alternative background. So this Glenfiddich whiskey shot has a painted hardboard background similar to the other whiskey shot, but the surface that the whiskey and the glass are sitting on is actually a secondhand tabletop. So what I often do for backgrounds is I will visit secondhand furniture stores and look for lovely sort of rustic tables. It doesn't matter if they're a bit battered or a bit beaten up or they've got a few stains on and things like that. What I'm actually after is just the surface. So if I see a table that looks 
like it could make a good food photography or um, beverage photography background, then I'll purchase the table and then I take the legs off and throw them away because I only actually want the top. I'm just after those wooden surfaces. As soon as I can get hold of a surface that's sort of bigger than a metre uh, wide or a metre square or that sort of size or, you know, 90 by 1.2, um, then that works perfectly for backgrounds for these sort of shots. And this one was just, again, just a secondhand table found in a secondhand store, purchased it for probably less than $50.00. And uh, I've had that top for years now and I've used it for a variety of projects. OK, let's talk something a little bit different this time. So if we take a look at this watch shot on the Amiga watch. Uh, this watch was shot in the studio. As a matter of fact, we've got a full uh, walkthrough class on this shot on uh, visualeducation.com as we have on some of the other uh, ones I've shown you. So the watch was photographed in the studio with the intention of making it look like it was underwater because it's um, a dive watch. And I had a look at various stock images with bubbles rising up and um, you know, trying to find a shot that would be suitable to use as a background plate to put this shot in. And I couldn't actually find one that worked in quite the way I wanted. So this background image was actually made in AI. So I used Midjourney, described to Midjourney the type of background that I wanted. And those of you that are familiar with using AI backgrounds, it took a few goes to describe what I wanted and make a few modifications. So I kind of ended up where the bubbles uh, were where I needed them. And then um, that allowed me to get this image here, which was the um, AI background. And I was happy enough with that. You notice there's a few highlights in it here. There's one here and there's one here. They're a, a little bit distracting. So in the post-production stage on the watch, I basically just removed those and toned those down. So obviously the background wasn't perfect for my needs. Um, and what I did was I used some bubbles from here and then cloned them and flipped them and put them on top of the watch and blended different blending modes with the layers to create more of a three-dimensional effect. But the background that I created in Midjourney as an AI background had enough content in it for me to work with um, to duplicate things and flip them and eventually arrive at this um, final um, montaged image. Now, while we're on the subject of liquid backgrounds, let's take a look at this Tom Ford shot. So uh, this shot was done by laying the perfume down in a tray of liquid. So I've got various different size trays in um, my studio store here, and um, they allow me to create different levels of water from just a couple of centimeters deep uh, to, you know, 10 centimeters deep so that I can photograph different levels of water with items uh, submerged in it. Now, this was the shallow tray with the perfume laying on its back in the tray and then a little acrylic block under the product so that it just keeps it angled up so it didn't get submerged. And then um, my assistant was moving the water um, with a ruler um, to push waves of water. And I used various techniques of lighting um, to capture those waves and that motion. So that's actually kind of using an organic material such as water as the actual background. Now, here's an interesting one. This one, this was a, a you know, very popular shot that I produced. This one, again, is a, a class on visualeducation.com uh, where we demonstrate, you know, high-end advertising cosmetics shot, in particular in this one using focus stacking techniques. And a lot of people love this shot, um, yet it's very simple. It was quite simple to execute. I've got a matte gray acrylic surface. So the same sort of acrylic as this in the matte finish, but a black one is the base surface. And then I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, what are those, those lovely black ball shapes that you've got there? Um, and that, again, was so simple. It's this. It is a table tennis ball. Uh, maybe in your country you call it ping pong, but table tennis. It's just one of those balls. 
and then they've been sprayed matte black. So we put them um, on a tray, matte black, spray paint in a can from the hardware store, gave them a coating of matte paint, let it dry, turn it over, do the other side, and we painted up maybe about 50 or more of these balls and um, we've used them multiple times for various things, but it was uh, used in particular for this shot, as you can see here, and they made a really um, effective um, background. We also actually used them in a fashion shoot as well, which was another uh, big sort of project shot that we did where we threw the balls in the air and they just bounced everywhere with the model striking a pose in the scene behind and capturing all those table tennis or ping pong balls bouncing up and down as part of the main image. So again, you know, these items are often used multiple times for various shoots once you've, um, once you've actually got them. Uh, let's take a look at this Coca-Cola image. Uh, this one is a particular favorite of mine. This actually uses that coffee table um, that we've just spoken about. So there's the edge of the coffee table from our reception. And in the background, or the background, is again just a painted MDF or hardboard background painted with matte emulsion paint to the colour that we want and just put a little glow of light onto that. Right, now we're going to take uh, a look at a couple of behind the scenes shots here as well because I've got one shot in particular that you might be a little bit confused how we got this background. You might think, wow, did they really go to the Namibia or Sahara desert to photograph this um, Hugo Boss bottle with this lovely backlight, um, backlit sunlight um, scene behind it? Well, no, we didn't. As a matter of fact, this one is much, much simpler than that. And I've got um, some behind the scenes shots for you here. And you can see this is actually done with a television. So there you can see the Hugo Boss bottle. So we actually had some sand to create the foreground scene for the Boss bottle to sit on. And then the background behind that was just a large 4K television with a stock image on it uh, that we just searched for the most appropriate and suitable image. And then a long exposure was taken along with the studio lighting uh, to light the bottle with the studio lighting and then the background self-illuminating via the television screen. Interestingly, this is a technique that we've been doing for decades. We used to do this using large transparencies, um, so actually a large transparent photograph in the background and put a softbox light through that. Obviously, these days with um, super high resolution televisions, you can actually use a television screen uh, to do it, which is what we've done um, there. And you can see how effective and how real that actually looks in the final result, especially because you're going to throw that background depth of field out a little bit as well behind the subject. Right, what do we, uh, what do we have left to talk about here? Um, okay, the... Remy Cognac shot. We did a YouTube video for you guys explaining all about this shot and how it was created. One of my favorites, this one. Very complex because of the, the shape of the bottle. But in that video, I explained that the background was actually um, an acrylic black surface, same stuff as this here, that the product is sitting on to create the reflection. But beyond the horizon is actually a stock shot. And if I come out of that shot here and we take a look, you can see that is the stock shot that was used. And I think it was either Adobe stock or iStock. stock. Um, I think we actually, I think it might be on both, but that's the stock shot um, that I used. I think it was just, you know, $10, $20 or whatever. And that uh, was blended with my black gloss acrylic surface reflection image to create the background on that um, Remy shot. Now, while we're on the subject of acrylics, let's take a look at this one. Now, you might think that that base surface to that vodka shot is a shiny gloss white acrylic, but it's not actually because I needed more reflectivity. So that is actually a polished sheet of stainless steel, basically just like a mirror. 
And you might ask, well, why didn't you use just a mirror as the base surface? And the, the problem with mirrors is that they actually give you a double reflection when you're looking at them at a low angle, the way they're coated. Um, it means that you can often see two images when you look at a low angle. But if you use polished stainless steel sheeting, which you can get from metal um, suppliers, metal hardware stores, then it gives you a perfect single image reflection. So that's a polished stainless steel base surface, but it's an acrylic background behind. But unlike this solid white acrylic, that one is a 50% opaque or 50% transparent frosted acrylic. And that means that you can shine light through it but because of the frosting on the acrylic, it diffuses it nicely to create this beautiful glow that you can see there. And I've got a couple of um, behind the scenes shots on that as well. So there's uh, the vodka bottle. You can see it on the polished metal. You can actually see the polished metal surface clearly there. And then you can see uh, my assistant just holding the uh, light behind positioning the light for me and that vertical background standing up there is five millimeter thick frosted acrylic again available from most sign service or plastic companies and then a light is shone through the back as you can see here and because of the frosting material in the acrylic it diffuses and spreads that light around really nicely and depending on the distance you move the light away obviously changes the the ball and the glow of light that you see uh, on the opposite on the camera side just a couple more that i'd like to show you some very very simple ones this one is just paper rolled up so piece of black paper rolled into a tube shape a little bit of sellotape to stick it make two or three of those in different sizes, and there uh, is the background created for that jewellery shot. And finally, while we're on the subject of paper or card in this case, this one is mount board card. So this is the type of card material that is used to frame pictures in galleries or um, you know art shops for framing your photographs or framing your paintings it's that border that goes around and it's usually quite a thick card it's called mount board card and it comes in lots of different colors it's usually white on the back and the color on the other side it's uh, a couple of mil thick but it's got a bit of flex to it but it's also quite rigid and it can take the weight of small products as it's doing in this case so what I did here was just bent the card into a sort of curved bridge wedged it between two fixed points and then put the uh, pair of glasses on top of it and um, that created that lovely curved line that arc and uh, gave quite an unusual background but again nothing difficult very very simple just a piece of mount board card so hopefully all of those examples gives you some inspiration and some ideas on how simple it is to actually create backgrounds. Just takes a little bit of thinking out of the box. Maybe go into your local sign service company supplier to source acrylics, plastics in matte and gloss or getting little things made or your hardware store for things like polished stainless steel, MDF, hardboard, a roller and some paint and create your own or occasionally stock shots and even these days using AI to um, create uh, your own custom made backgrounds uh, for some of your shots. And as I mentioned there as well, uh, even secondhand furniture stores uh, to buy old tables where you can just take off the tops of the tables and use those uh, for many shots from food photography to beverages. Hope you enjoyed this look at product photography and the backgrounds that we use. I'm Carl Taylor. Thanks very much for watching.